and welcome to this Stair Tailored. I'm Erica Mason from the University of Missouri. Today's video talks about explicit instruction and we really focus on asking the right questions. This is part two of a two-part series and in this part we talk about some troubleshooting issues with asking high-level questions. Most people express a lot of comfort and ease with asking low-level questions. Um, and so today we're gonna spend the rest of this video really taking a deep dive into some issues that come up with high-level questions and why it might be difficult to ask them. So the first problem is that it really requires a high level of content knowledge in order to feel confident and comfortable asking and then responding to a high-level question, right? So uh, something that teachers might think about is, well, what does dividing a fraction by a fraction really mean conceptually? Um, you might feel really comfortable talking about that procedurally, but perhaps the underlying reason or concept is a little more difficult to, to grasp. And so taking some time to really develop a rich content knowledge is one of the problems and what might prevent people from asking high-level questions. And so a solution to that we would suggest is to partner with colleagues. I mean, your building and your school district has all kinds of institutional knowledge and expertise. And so if you are a special education teacher, for example, and you are having a content area question, reach out to a math coordinator, to a math teacher, and talk to them about the content that you're uh, having questions about. Um, another thing is that we would encourage you to just try the math yourself. So reason through the problems. Uh, it might seem like a strange way to use your time, but by actually doing the mathematical problem, it's gonna hopefully uh, prompt you to think about um, whether or not you are really understanding uh, the concept and what questions might, you might have. This then naturally leads you to thinking like a student. So as you're working through the problem, you might already be thinking, oh, well, students are really gonna get stuck here, or I'll bet a student might answer my question in this way here. And it's really gonna help you uh, anticipate students' responses and then prepare what you think are gonna be some really reasonable responses to those questions. Okay, another area that might be really difficult or might be a barrier to asking a high-level question is that you might feel a little uncomfortable if students say the wrong things. So a student might say, you know, if you know the area of a shape, then you can always find the perimeter. And that's not a bad thing to say, right? That's just a really interesting observation a student might make. But sometimes maybe teachers feel uncomfortable when students say these wrong things because they're not quite sure how to respond. And so a solution we would suggest is to, again, keep that goal in mind. Your purpose is to uncover student thinking. It's not really to find one right answer. And so if I assume if a student was saying this, that your question might have been, well, what's the relationship between area and perimeter? And so there isn't maybe one clear or defined answer, but you're really wanting to know what students think about that. Again, and then it can, by really uh, keeping that goal in mind, it can help you ask the next right question, but without leading, right? So if you just wanna know more about what students are thinking, you'll be less inclined to lead them with your voice or lead them down a particular line of thinking if you keep that goal in mind. Um, another challenge that teachers might face is that they don't give enough wait time and that they sort of, in an attempt to help that student, they take over the student's thinking. So uh, for example, a teacher might say to a student, um, so the Pythagorean theorem works because each side of the triangle is squared. So the theorem works because if you draw three, what shape do you draw here? And again, they might be intended to be really helpful or they might have really good intentions to help students. Um, but instead, we would encourage you to respond with a question, right? So instead of necessarily um, giving your own thinking about how you're making sense of the Pythagorean theorem, for example, ask a question to students. Re remember to uncover their thinking. And then remind yourself why you asked the question in the first place. Again, sort of revisiting that goal. Um, it's tempting because as teachers, we often know the answer, or we've thought about this problem before, or we've had conversations with colleagues about this, but perhaps students haven't. And so the purpose, again, is to just give students a chance to show you their thinking so that you know not only what the next question might be, but it really helps inform your next steps in instruction. Thanks so much for watching the Stair Tailored. Have a good day.